automation is a tremendous tool for managing flights and provides a means to reduce the workload for pilots. But it's essential to properly manage this tool to derive the full benefit of these systems. Failure to properly manage automation has resulted in a good number of adverse events. In this video, we'll explore effective automation management principles while showing Garmin devices and features designed to help you manage your flights. Errors in use of automatic flight control systems and a lack of awareness of operating modes are causal factors in more than 20% of approach and landing accidents. This points to a need for a better understanding of these systems. Optimal use of flight deck automation involves the integrated and coordinated use of autopilots, auto throttles, if equipped, flight directors, and flight management systems. This requires an understanding of the pilot system interface and how the system operates in both normal and abnormal situations. When operating the system, Pilots should have two basic questions in mind. What do I want the aircraft to do now? And what do I want the aircraft to do next? When considering the question of what you want the aircraft to do now, you need to be aware of the actions that will result from engaging various modes and how to set targets for the aircraft to fly. For answering the question of what you want the aircraft to do next, you need to understand modes available for arming and which target is preset for the aircraft to capture and fly next. Pilots should have a full understanding of what each button on their automatic flight control system, or AFCS, mode controllers do. How target setting knobs function and where to observe the set targets. The flight management system must be understood so that you can program your flight routes and make modifications to lateral and vertical guidance when required. Also critical to understand are the AFCS mode enunciations that you can expect to see. This is an area where many pilots experience confusion, which drives them to select incorrect modes for various phases of flight. Actively monitoring the AFCS status box as seen here on a Garmin G3000 display, enables you to predict and anticipate the entire sequence of mode enunciations throughout your flight. When using automation, there are three basic steps to take. One, anticipate the results of any action you take and be aware of modes being engaged or armed. Two, execute the desired action. Three, Verify that your desired modes are either engaged or armed, that the active guidance is appropriate, for example, that lateral guidance is taking you to the desired waypoint, and that any armed modes have appropriate targets, such as the selected altitude for climbs and descents. Optimal use of automation enables you to stay ahead of the aircraft and be better prepared for unexpected changes. An operating philosophy that has been effectively employed by professional flight organizations around the world also has three components. First, always use the correct level of automation for the task at hand. This could be an FMS managed mode, such as when flying an arrival procedure that has multiple altitude and speed restrictions, or a selected mode, such as when performing a descent using vertical speed mode and a selected rate of descent. Consider which mode would provide the most workload reduction and most effectively reduce the chance of making an error. The correct level is most often the one that you are comfortable with for the task being accomplished. You must also consider the phase of flight you are in and the amount of time you have available to make changes when called for. Sometimes the correct level of automation is none at all, as in hand flying, such as when given a late runway change by ATC. Second, the AFCS status must be monitored at all times. Confirm all selections when engaging or arming modes. 
know what the system is doing now, and anticipate what will happen next. Confirm that any target changes, such as heading or altitude, are set properly. Monitor the system to ensure that proper guidance is being shown. Third, be ready to disengage the autopilot and hand fly the aircraft. If you have any doubts regarding the aircraft's flight path or speed control, don't attempt to reprogram the FMS at this point. Use selected guidance, such as heading mode and manual auto throttle settings, or disengage all automation and hand fly the airplane. If hand flying, flight director command should be followed. Otherwise, the flight director bar should be removed from the display by pressing the FD button. There are a number of factors that affect the optimal use of automation. Waiting too long to take over from automation, especially when the system is not acting as expected. Being overly complacent and failing to actively monitor and supervise the system. Engaging or arming an incorrect mode. Failing to monitor the AFCS status box to verify modes engaged or armed failure to properly select a target altitude, heading, or airspeed, insertion of improper waypoints, preoccupation with FMS programming during a time-critical phase of flight, confusion about mode selection and transitions, failure to arm the approach mode, reactivating the approach once on the approach, be sure to review the documentation supplied with your avionics system to develop a full understanding of available modes of automation. And then, use your automation regularly to develop and maintain proficiency. And don't forget, if you have to ask, what is it doing now? Then it's time to disengage the automation and hand fly the airplane. Okay. That wraps up our discussion of how employing automation management principles contributes to safe flight. Be sure to check out additional information on this subject in the documents that are linked in the description for this video. We encourage you to continue your safety journey by viewing the other videos in the Garmin Aviation Risk Management series. And thanks for flying Garmin.